What's up, brother? Hey, Trace. What up, you guys? Welcome back to another video. Today, we are here with the Elevated Riders, or at least half of them, and we are gonna be comparing the question that everyone wants to know, the G5 Turbo versus the Polaris Boost. So we got epic conditions today, pretty awesome crew, Stetson and Trace with us here, and it's gonna be fun. We're gonna get these sleds out there side by side and see what they got. Yeah, Stetson brought up this idea earlier in the season to compare head to head his boost versus one of our Gen 5 turbos, so that's exactly what we're gonna do today. We're missing half the crew, where are the boys at? So Dylan and Tyler are actually racing the Rimshaw series this year. So they're down at a race this weekend. That's why we unfortunately don't have them today. We're going to be catching up with them in a couple weeks at Jackson Hole Hill Climbs. That's always a highlight of our season. That's coming up. So be on the lookout for that video here in a couple of weeks. But today we're going to head up. It's a beautiful blue sky day here in Idaho. We're going to put these things to the test, answering all kinds of questions that you guys have given us on social media. We're gonna try and answer them all. There's a million things to consider this time of year when you're planning what you're gonna ride for the next season during snow check period. So we're gonna try and do the best we can to answer all those questions. up here into the good stuff we kind of figured if we get up to this elevation the snow would get a little bit better and it sure has now we're going to start comparing these things head to head and the point of this is not to disparage either brand to be clear like we love all snowmobile brands we ride them all any innovation in the industry is good for all snowmobilers in our opinion so we're just here to point out from an unbiased opinion what we think uh the strengths and weaknesses are of each sled. So with that being said, we're gonna begin with some side hilling and side hilling characteristics. Polarises are pretty glued to the side of the hill. That's what they've been known for is being really good in the trees. We've been watching videos of Barant just slice it and dice them for years, Kasturki, Cody Monroe, all these guys ride their Polarises in the trees like absolute weapons. But the Gen 5 has been narrowed up and has some new handling characteristics this year. So we're gonna pick out a slope that's pretty steep measure the angle and then try a variety of different lines across that face and see how they handle. Preliminary results, not sure, because I was stuck in the woods while Stetson took his line. But comparing the tracks a little bit here, it's clear that the Polaris held the line just a little bit better. I did experience some washing, especially as I was going around a little convexity here in the hill um, at one of its steepest points. Now this hill may not look that steep. The cameras tend to do that, but we're going to check the slope angle here. We're right at about a 39 degree slope in this particular spot. So anywhere from like 39 to probably 43 degrees on this slope. Um, the Gen 5 was able to hang on though. I had my foot all the way up on the board. Skidoo's made some improvements on their chassis uh, by narrowing up the front end to a 34. And then this year on the Expert, the track has full width rods. In the past, they've had a flex edge track, which definitely contributed to the washiness. So stoked that it's holding a line a little bit better than the Gen 4s, but I still don't think it tops the Matrix. So we're gonna do some more tree riding here just to get a better feel, a couple more lines in, and then we're on to the next comparison. <laughs>
sun just popped out in between the clouds here we had to hit this booter it's like the most perfectly shaped natural lip step down didn't even hit it with a shovel uh, that brings me to jumping speak a little bit to the differences between jumping after Dylan hits it right here hold on there's definitely some differences yeah, between so. jumping a skidoo and jumping a Polaris. Uh, the skidoo to me feels a lot more flowy in air. Typically get like one to the left, one to the right, and kind of find your center. Whereas the Polaris just kind of, you could do whatever you want in air. Like you could come off some stuff really sketchy and generally save it. I love whipping out the Polaris too, but that just feels a little more like a dirt bike in some way. This feels like you're, you are piloting the ship and everything else is following you. So it's kind of cool. We're hitting these downhill hits. You just be leaning way over the front, spotting the landing, and bringing the whole sled down with you. So we're gonna <clears throat> we're gonna keep working up this ridge and hopefully find some more hits. This zone that we're in today has a little bit of everything. Some really sweet trees, big wind lips and features like we're in right now, pillows, open meadows, all kinds of stuff. So it's been fun to get up in here and kind of explore some of this different terrain. We wanna talk a little bit about what exactly these sleds are so we can make a fair comparison going forward. So Stetson, do you wanna talk about yours? Yeah, so this is a 2023 Polaris Chaos slash 155 boost. So that Polaris has long names, but that's what this model is. And this sled is bone stock. The only upgrades on this is a, a throttle block and then a brake reservoir protector. And other than that, the wrap. Other, the clutching stock, pipe stock, can stock, bone stock, snowmobile. And is it a three inch or a 275? 275. Okay. So the three inch track uh, is about five pounds heavier from what it sounds like. And this has the seven S gauge as well, that adds some weight. Yeah. I, apparently the Chaos is a little bit heavier than the Pro too. Yeah. Um, Snow West Magazine has been weighing all of these new sleds and posting the results on their Instagram page. So definitely check that out. Between the two of these sleds, it's about a 25 pound difference. Um, one thing that I've got going for me over here though is this little... Um, <laughs> shot is definitely a convenience of the skidoo this is a skidoo gen 5 summit 850 turbo it's a 154 track length by three inch lug this is the turbo r motor uh, which is new for 23 it's basically the same thing just tuned up a little bit this sled also has the premium uh, 10 and a quarter inch display uh, so that adds a little bit of weight as well but these sleds are pretty similar as far as class goes they're both 154 they're both that taller lug and they're both turbos uh, so it should be a pretty good comparison. I do have some aftermarket parts on this thing. Um, I've got a full exhaust from Bikeman. I don't have a tune in it. Um, it's just a full exhaust and clutching. So that will definitely make a little bit of a difference in getting power to the ground. So keep that in mind when we're talking about some of these hill climbs and wheelies and drag races. I might have a little bit of an advantage there because of the aftermarket parts. Other than that, this thing's pretty stock outside of suspension, wrap, and some controls. While these are both 154, 155 and not ideal for climbing, this will be a good comparison to see which is kind of getting the best traction going uphill in this snow. It's pretty light, fluffy snow on top with some decent base underneath. So this should be a great test. Um, one thing we should probably talk about with these type of comparisons is rider weight. I'm 200 pounds without gear. What are you? I'm 215 without gear. Okay. So we're pretty close in rider weight. Um, the difference in sled puts us actually a total weight really close. Um, so that'll be good to keep in mind as we're climbing this stuff and doing these pulls. So Stetson, you want to go first and take a rip up here, see how high you can get? Yep.
very far. <laughs> so that was pretty deep. Yeah, it got really deep right at the tree line. Yeah, okay. Well, I basically just have to get past that line then, huh? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Pretty much. Let's see. I think Jack got me by like five feet from what I can tell. Okay, so we just got finished up doing the hill climb competition between the Polaris Boost and the Skidoo Gen 5. And from what we could tell, the Skidoo Gen 5 probably pulled five feet further up the hill than the Polaris Boost. Um, a couple different factors we believe for that is the three inch track on the Skidoo probably gets a little bit more better traction. Um, the Polaris seems to get some faster track speed, but we'll lose that track speed faster over time, so. Either way, with both of these sleds, I think you can climb out of uh, they'll both be able to climb out of the same hole, if that makes sense. They're both very comparable. It's pretty much rider preference. And Stetson's even got a little bit of weight on me, so it, it was right there, neck and neck, as far as climbing goes. So both great options if you're into climbing shoots and stuff like that, I guess, but you'll probably want a longer track than a 55. Um, another thing we could talk about is the electronics department. That's something that's new to the snowmobile industry in the last couple of years, is these big gauges on these sleds and Bluetooth and all these different features that you can get nowadays. Skidoo came out with a 10 and a quarter inch display this year uh, for their mountain sleds, and I believe it's available on other sleds too. And <clears throat> Polaris last year came out with the 7S display for the Matrix. Comparing these back and forth, they're both chock full of features. The 7S definitely wins in this department. As somebody who has both, I could speak to this a little bit. The Skidoo gauge is great, but it's simply a screen mirroring device. So it has very few capabilities of its own. You have to have your phone plugged in to use any of the mapping or communication or media or anything like that. Now with the Polaris, you can actually communicate with your friends without the need for cell service. And you can see where they're at on the map, which is really cool too. If you start up a group ride, you can add people to your group. You could see where they're at. You could see their speed, their direction. It's wild. And it's something that I think the entire industry could benefit from. It sounds like Skidoo might have some features like that coming out for 24, and I believe these gauges on the 23s are updatable over the air. But we'll have to wait and see over the next couple of years how all that develops. So as far as functionality goes, they both work really well, but the Polaris is much more sophisticated, much more capable, and much more dialed in in the gauge department. Tree lines. <laughs> As you can see, I'm washing there a little bit. It's pretty much unavoidable on something this steep, but the Gen 5 definitely recovers better than the Gen 4 when you do wash out.
Yeah. Man, what an awesome day riding with the Elevated Riders boys up here in a really cool zone with some awesome snow for mid-March. I mean, it was really cool putting these turbos head to head and really comparing on the same slopes the best we could some of these characteristics. Now, in a video like this, it's really difficult actually to cover all the topics that we wanted to cover and, and show each of these things individually. So here's some final thoughts. Number one, they're both great sleds. Like, I like riding both Polaris and Skidoo, and I don't think you can go wrong with either. There's certain things that each one does better. Love the Skidoo for going downhill, deep snow, jumping, that type of free riding. In marginal snow, more set up snow, old tracks, the Polaris definitely excels and is very predictable. Number two, the motors head to head seem pretty comparable. I think the mid range on this is a little broader uh, because of the pipe and the top end, it pulls a bit harder, but the Polaris works really well. It gets through the snow well, it's light, and it translates that power to the ground really nicely. Last we had to see it with a really fun competition, who could wheelie the longest? And the Skidoo got the Polaris there, but nothing wheelies as well as the Lynx 146. This thing is designed for the wheelie. <laughs> so fun just holding this thing wide open like a boat across here. It's going to be really wild seeing this motor in that sled next year with the 146 turbo. Yeah. Should we get one? We have to wait and see. Yes. We covered a ton of topics in this video, but of course it's impossible to cover everything. So if you've got questions, drop them in the comments. Let's start a conversation about these 2023 sleds. So let us know what you're ordering for the next model year in the comments, and we'll see you on the next video, guys. Thanks so much for watching.